you know, I used to do this thing where I would tell everybody that I'm trying to get right with God. And the very first thing I would try to do is stop sinning. I feel like I had to be sinless. I feel like I had to have everything in my life in order before I actually started that point to seek after God. And I feel like a lot of us do the same thing where we want to seek after God, but immediately our mind goes to, oh, I got to stop sinning first. So I would try not to sin. You know, I would go maybe a day, a week or two. and It was pretty good. Then I fall back into the same cycle of sin. And I be like, dang, I can't seek after God yet. I'm not perfect. And I keep doing it and do it and do it. And then I realized it was just a repetitive cycle. And I just kept trying to not sin, which made me sin even more somehow. And I noticed that I was never truly seeking God because I was so focused on my sin blocking me from seeking him. And that right there is what a lot of people get stuck in. It's that, that cycle of trying to stop sinning before we seek God that we all get stuck in. You know, Einstein once said the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting different results. And that's what was happening to me until I realized that nothing was changing by me trying to stop sin before seeking God. In Matthew 6, Jesus says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. Notice righteousness comes second because righteousness is a byproduct of seeking the kingdom of God. You know, I go to college to learn a certain subject from the best of the best people who mastered that subject. Right. Teachers. In the same way, Jesus is the only one who mastered sin. So what better way for you, for I, to overcome sin than to learn from the master? So you can't go about life trying to be sinless and trying to be righteous without seeking Jesus. It's impossible. The moment you put seeking God to the side and put achieving righteousness and achieving sinlessness first, then sin becomes your God. Sin becomes your idol because you're so focused on it that Jesus has become a byproduct of you being sinless when it should be the other way around. You know, I'm not perfect. And I wanted to always feel sinless when I come on here and talk about God and talk about the word. But then God made me realize that sin doesn't stop his plans for us. What stops his plans for us is us not doing anything, meaning us not seeking him. So basically, in a cool way, God was trying to tell me that the only thing that can stop him from moving in me is me not having motion. Because even science will tell you an object in motion stays in motion. So when you don't want to pray, read your Bible, fast, talk to God, then it's a problem. Because you can't stop sin unless you do that. We have to stop worshiping this idea of sinlessness without God. The moment you try to become sinless in order to be in God's presence, you're basically telling Jesus that he should have never died on the cross. You're telling Jesus that basically you don't need him to be perfect. You just need perfection itself. We have to stop treating God like a metal detector. What do metal detectors do? They scan you before you enter into a place. God doesn't scan you before you enter into his presence. He cleanses you. Because sinlessness without God is just filthy rags waiting to be washed.